To determine the initial amplitude of the wave, we need to know what the battery sees when the switch is closed. Specifically, what we're asking is what impedance does the battery see? Well, we know what the battery sees when the switch is closed because we developed an equivalent circuit for the transmission line. This is what the generator sees, the first equivalent circuit with more equivalent circuits beyond it. That is, at time t equals zero plus, the battery can't see what is beyond the first delta z transmission line segment, except to know that there's more homogeneous transmission line beyond it. And it certainly doesn't know what is at the end of the transmission line yet. How could it? Not enough time has elapsed for anything to move all the way down the transmission line. In other words, to calculate what the battery sees, we essentially want to know what is Z in, the input impedance at the beginning of the transmission line. Let's consider a generalized scenario where the complex impedance Z1 can be used to represent the resistor and inductor in series, and Z2 is used to represent the resistor and capacitor in parallel. We'll use some knowledge from a typical circuits class to come up with an expression for Z in. We'll assume the transmission line is homogeneous, which means that Z2 is in parallel with Z in, meaning that we can write Z1, Z2 here. If we're looking in, we get the input impedance. And what's beyond here, uh, we have more transmission lines, which is equal to Z in, because it's homogeneous. In this case, the input impedance is equal to Z in is Z1 plus Z2 in parallel with Z in. If we continue to assume we have a lossless transmission line with only inductors and capacitors, then we can say Z1 is equal to j omega l prime delta z, and y2, the admittance for, for z2, corresponding to z2, is j omega c prime delta z. If we were to work through this, this um, equation and work everything out, as you might in a circuits class, we would get the following. We would get z in is equal to the square root of L prime delta Z over C prime delta Z, we extend this, minus omega L prime delta Z over two squared. In this equation, the delta Z's in the first term can cancel, so I'll cross those out. And since each delta Z transmission line segment is infinitesimally small, we can take the limit where delta Z goes to zero. In this case, in this case, which term dominates? Which of these two terms dominate? The first one. Since delta Z is in the numerator of the second one, that term will go to zero. So in this case, as delta Z goes to zero, the input impedance becomes L prime over C prime. And we can multiply this by a constant uh, equivalent to one. We can multiply it times square root of the length of the line over the length of the line. Then we'll have L prime times L and C prime times L. And what this does is we can write an equivalent expression just as L over C, square root of L over C. This Z in, Z in input impedance, is an impedance that describes the transmission line. We'll call it the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. We'll call it Z sub zero. Now let's think about what we can learn from this square root of L over C value for Z naught, the characteristic impedance. For example, L and C are both real numbers. So Z naught is a real number. What other circuit component has a purely real impedance? 